second, the Creek Fire, started early Tuesday morning near Silmar, and the third, named the Rye Fire, erupted in Santa Clarita hours later. Together, they burned more than 55,000 acres and forced the evacuations of at least 27,000 people. Jamie Yukis is in Ventura. They're some of the harshest conditions firefighters have faced in years. Extremely dry, powerful winds roared through Ventura County last night. Within hours, a 50-acre fire exploded. And the winds haven't let up. This is what firefighters are facing. We're trying to keep this from extending into this whole neighborhood. Also hampering the fight, little or no water pressure on several hillside streets. So you just can't get water out of the hydrants? Yeah, there's only a limited amount. You can only get so much. Once the water from fire trucks ran out, all that remained on several streets were garden hoses. Go. Go, go. So residents filled buckets, trying to douse hot spots before they reignite. But throughout the day, the fire claimed even more homes. Police are going door to door, mandatory evacuation in effect. warning residents to leave now. Uh, the wind shifted. It's coming down. It's about four or five houses now. We're scared. It's time to go. Yeah, it is time to go. In another neighborhood, we found Stephen Phillips. Why did you come up here? Uh, the check on my son's house. His son is a firefighter. Now on the lines, his pregnant wife safely evacuated. As the flames came closer. I mean, you see this. That's what's the only thing you can do now? Just stay as a family and, you know, and be blessed that you're alive and you can always rebuild. The flames got so intense, we had to leave. The fate of that firefighter's house, as well as so many others, is unknown. The extreme weather conditions here are expected to last through at least Friday morning. Elaine. Well, Jamie, you're in Ventura County, about 60 miles northwest of Los Angeles. What are conditions like on the ground there? It has been an unbelievable day, Elaine. I'll tell you that the fire started late last night and continued into the overnight hours through this morning and much of the day. We are still at this point in time on the Pacific uh, coast just before 4 o'clock p.m. We are at 0% containment. We don't know how that could change because it is so dynamic. The conditions have been so bad. Firefighters, as a matter of fact, so many of the fire hydrants had such low pressure, they weren't able to get water out. So despite fighting windy conditions, having these embers blow around everywhere, having more than 150 structures lost, that number certain to go up because that number was taken before these homes uh, burned down earlier today. Besides all of that, they had a hard time getting water. It's just been a treacherous day for them. And as you can see, all the smoke in the air uh, with that wind, it's been hard to battle it out here for sure. Yeah, you know, the shelters here said that they were really overwhelmed by the number of people who showed up. They weren't expecting it. They opened up thinking a few may come in. But this fire has just been so dynamic and continues to change. The thing that concerns firefighters going into nightfall is that once it becomes dark and those windy conditions uh, continue to, to stay around or even pick up through the overnight hours, is those embers can move and then create these hot spots and create new fires and new neighborhoods. So that could mean more evacuations. We just don't know where this fire could go. And you don't, you're not able to get a handle on it from the air because at night when it's windy and it's dark, they can't put the helicopters up. So there's no way of knowing uh, where this could end up shifting to and, and how many more people would need.